Hallelujah and blessings in Jesus, friends. Welcome back to Hayekadosh Ministries, where holiness is a way of life. Jesus is truly King of Kings and Lord of Lords, and the Holy Bible is our only standard and authority for truth. And together, God's people say, Hallelujah. Now, this morning, I would like to pause, if we may, because on November the 26th, in the year of our Lord, 2016, this ministry began. Now, because we were in our study on the book of Hebrews, I really didn't focus on that date. But in one year, God has been so good and so faithful to us. We have over 600 teaching videos on our YouTube ministry. Every one of those videos have been carefully cataloged in what YouTube calls playlists. We begin our one a day series on January 1st of this year and God has been faithful and good to see that we have not missed a single day, praise the Lord. We are currently at 95 subscribers and we are quickly approaching 12,000 views. That is 12,000 opportunities that people have had to hear the word of the Lord and to grow thereby. Now, some of you have contributed to this ministry and play an ongoing part in the work that we do. Others of you have kept us in your prayers when you talk to the Lord Jesus, and for that we are eternally grateful. But the person that I want to thank the most is my little brother, Darren Livinggood, because without his encouragement, this ministry would have never begun. And not only did he encourage me, but he also purchased the camera and the microphone by which, if he had not, this ministry would never have been started. And so I'm eternally grateful as well for the contribution that my little brother has made to this ministry. And I would encourage you to reach out and say thank you so that he may know how your lives have been impacted by the presentation of the Word of God that we strive to bring to you each day because I know that he will find great joy in the testimony that you share. Now, there is one other person that I would like to thank, and yet they will go unnamed. But when we were going through our computer problems, this person reached out and helped us purchase a new computer so that we can continue moving forward in our ministry. Now, I only want to point these things out because this is a monumental moment for us, being our one-year anniversary. And as you have most likely noticed, I have asked for nothing from any of my viewers. My feeling is if the Most High puts upon your heart a desire to contribute, you know how to get in touch with us. But I've never tried to influence you in any way, nor will I ever. But as God has moved upon the heart of my little brother and this unnamed viewer, I simply want to say thank you because every person we reach, we could not have done it without you. Now, with that being said, we are rolling over into a new month as today is December 1st. And I hope that you are keeping up with us in reading five chapters of the New Testament each day. If you were doing this, at this point, you would be halfway through the New Testament. Now, I only share this with you to encourage you that if I can do it, so can you. And so as of today, I have read the book of Romans this month, the book of Hebrews, the book of John, the book of 1 Corinthians, the book of 2 Corinthians, the book of Mark, the book of Galatians, the book of Ephesians, the book of Philippians, the book of Colossians, the books of 1 and 2 Thessalonians, the book of Titus, the books of 1 and 2 Timothy, the book of James, the book of First and Second Peter, the book of Philemon, and today I will be reading the book of First John. Now, I would love to hear where you are in your reading schedule and how it has impacted your life, what you are learning by doing so, by taking on this discipline. So please feel free to share your thoughts, both with myself and with others who read your post on a daily basis. The final thing that I would like to say is that I've heard from many of you, the viewer, and one of the things that I've noticed, and I say this with as much humility as I can possibly muster, 
is that oftentimes it's difficult for me to remember what the beginning stages of learning the Bible were all about. So there are things that I address in our teachings and I take for granted that you're aware of these stories, that you're aware of these principles. And yet for many of you, it seems that you're not as aware of these stories as you should be in this time of your growth. Now I'm not saying that to beat you up. It's just a simple fact of what many of you have told me. And so what I want to do beginning today is I want to begin in the book of Genesis chapter 1, verse 1, and we are going to move our way through the Bible addressing each and every story so that you can become better acquainted with the people that lived these stories and what we can learn from them to help and assist us in our daily journeys. However, I'm going to do this every other day. Between those days, we're going to either do a book study from the New Testament, or we'll focus on a key passage that the Lord has laid on my heart that I'm able to share with you. So for instance, Sunday we'll be working our way through the Bible stories. Monday we'll be working our way through a book. Tuesday we'll be back to the Bible stories. Wednesday through a book and so on. Now last month I asked you, would you rather do a book study on the book of Hebrews or the book of Romans? And as I considered your input and spending much time in prayer and thought on this, the Lord laid it on my heart to begin in the book of Hebrews, but I have not forgotten your request. So beginning tomorrow, we're going to begin in the book of Romans and we'll do a study through the book of Romans. And then every other day, we'll be working our way through the Bible, addressing each story that is important to us as the followers of God. So with all of that being said, let's begin in Genesis chapter 1, verse 1 today. And what we're going to notice at the start is that the very first words say, In the beginning, God. What a wonderful start to the beginning of the story when we seek to find answer for the lives that we live. Why are we here? Where are we headed? And what is our trip through this life really all about? And yet we are told as we open the first page... In the beginning, God. It's all about God. Everything else is an extension from God. Now the word God here in the Hebrew is the word Elohim. And it's plural. And so for instance, in verse 26 of chapter 1, it says, And God said, Let us make man in our image, after our likeness. So we see here in the beginning of this wonderful story that is about to be unfolded before us, it all began with God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Now, if we were to be reading these words for the first time, we would not see that until we find ourselves much deeper in the book. Unless you were Hebrew or reading Hebrew, then you would understand the plurality in the name of God here in the beginning. And it says God created the heaven and the earth. Now it's interesting because science was to tell us that everything began with a big bang. And friends, there's a very strong possibility that that is true, but not in the way that science presents it. The Bible tells us in verse 3, God said, God said, God said, he spoke, let there be light. Bang, there was light. And so science is merely trying to explain how the universe began without the existence of God. Yet we see that the story begins in the beginning God. Now there is much debate between verse 1 and verse 2. In other words, there's much debate how much time is in between these. And when I say debate, most of the debate comes from Bible scholars and theologians. Was there one day between the verse 1 and 2? Was there a million years, a billion years? Well, we don't know, and it's really not that important. But it tells us God created in the beginning the heaven and the earth, and the earth was without form. It was useless. It was desolate. It was empty. It was in the Hebrew, tohu bohu, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. Now, the deep would indicate the oceans upon the earth. And the Spirit of God 
moved upon the face of the waters. And God said, let there be light, and there was light. Now this would be the first time that God brings light into darkness, offering a better way. And yet, we're going to see that the creation of God, man specifically, tries to overthrow the light with his own darkness. And so God once again will bring light into the darkness through the person of his son, Jesus Christ, once again offering a better way. And verse 4 tells us God saw the light, that it was good, and God divided the light from the darkness. When Jesus, the light of the world, walked upon the earth, God saw and said it was good. This is my good and faithful son in whom I am well pleased. And so verse 5 tells us God called the light day and the darkness he called night. And notice this, the evening and the morning were the first day. Now there are those who would lead us to believe that each day of creation could have taken millions of years. Yet the Bible tells us right here very clearly the evening and the morning were the first day. And so this is a 24-hour day, and we see that by the evening and the morning. Now, we're going to end there today, friends. We'll pick up again tomorrow in verse 6. And let us take away from this story this morning the simple fact that God is in the creation business. He's constantly speaking, let there be light in the lives of men, in those who will surrender to me. And when the light comes, darkness flees. Now, if we've been born again as Jesus commanded of us, we've experienced the removal of the darkness from our lives. And because we are now walking in the light, fleeing the darkness, just as the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters at the beginning of creation, so He moves upon our lives, friends. And when God looks upon our lives and He sees the light that is within us through His Son, Jesus, it brings him much pleasure. So may we spend every moment of our lives seeking to bring him much pleasure, friends, ridding ourselves of the darkness that lies within and allowing his transparent light to reveal all about us so that we can become the men and women he's created us to be. Well, I trust that that's your prayer, friends. I trust that that's your desire. I trust that's your number one goal in life that he would have his perfect way in you and through you, and that Jesus alone would be seen through the way you live and the choices you make. Now, as he wills, and until next time, friends, I truly love you, and I'll see you on the next video.